G'day guys, Steve Morgan here at the Lure and Fly Expo for 2017. It's the Sunday of the show, which means it's the day after the Lure Show Awards have been awarded. And every year we get such a fantastic diversity of artistic, functional and innovative Australian lures. The peers vote on it and at the awards night, the guys win some great trophies. They're behind me here in the cabinet, but what we're going to do is we're going to track down the guys that have won these awards, have a look at the baits and get a bit of a story behind them. So first off the mark here we have Matt Fraser from Baramba Lures and Matt won the trophy for the best top water surface wake bait and Matt over the last year or two this style of lure has really exploded so it was a really competitive category wasn't it? Yeah that's right Murray Cod surface fishing has, has exploded in the last two years and um, so it is yeah it's a great way to fish for them it's, it's fun big surface explosions and it's, it's a booming part of the industry at the moment. Tell us about the lure that won the award. Okay, it's the, the baby Baramba um, Dragon, so it's a uh, timber lure, four segments, um, and it's a wake bait, so you just retrieve it, slow retrieve across the surface and they just come up and smash it. So um, yeah, a bit, bit of work goes into making them, but the, the action on them is excellent, and um, yeah, they just catch fish and you've got to make them nice and strong, obviously they handle big fish too. Now, what's the approximate retail price on that little fella? So the little guy's 120. I make this in three sizes. So I've got a, uh, the, he's about 200 mil, then I've got a 240 mil one for 130, and then I've got a 290 mil one for 150. Now, you've got in the other hand here, you've got a real work of art. I know you didn't enter that for the awards, but it looks like it should win every award in the place. Tell us about that one. Yeah, that's the, the you know, the flagship model, I suppose, the, the Bramber Blue Tongue. I, um, I was making the dragons first and then, I happened to uh, find a blue tongue in, in my shed, so I uh, ended up making a um, making a blue tongue based off him, and I was able to get it super realistic because I had the actual, rather than going off photos, I had the actual uh, the live model to to work off, and um, took took four days to get the paint right just for the first couple of lures, and then from then, you know, I've got production on these, and they're three hundred dollars piece, you know, mounted, signed, leather card and badge. Um, yeah, and I just really enjoy the, you know, creativity and being able to make that and people uh, appreciate it. Yeah, look, it's, it's a blue tongue that's so real, I'm expecting it to stick a little tongue out and eat something. Now, Matt, congratulations. That's the first of our Lua show winners. So just up the road here from Baramba Lures, we've got Blair Chilton from Chilton Tackle Company. It's a swim bait category they won the trophy in. Um, it's a great looking bait, Blair. Tell us a bit of the history and, and about the bait that won the prize. Uh, this is this is my swim bait I call the Neville. Um, it's a, a four piece jointed swim bait. Um, designed sort of primarily for Barra and Murray Cod. Um, got a really nice slow sort of snaky action. Um, all made from timber and then foiled and then painted. Um, seems, to, seems to sort of be a nice natural action that the fish seems to really really appreciate. Um, so. Now now what about the the development process? How long is it taking you to get your art form to this? Because this is a work of art this lure. Yeah it, it's 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 taken a while. Um, each each new design I sort of come up with takes probably you know a couple of months of, of testing and, and waiting and and because it's timber each piece has to be weighed individually um, which you know again it takes a really long time. Um, so, you know, lots of testing, fine tuning, a little bit of weight here, a little bit of weight there. Um, you know, sometimes the tiniest little bit of weight in one position can make all the difference. Um, you know, I, I find, you know, half a gram sometimes can be the difference between a good swimming bait and a, and a bait that just doesn't do anything. So, lots of lots of time, lots of patience. Um, lots of patience from my wife as well you know for the many hours I spend in there doing it and tinkering around so yeah and what sort of price tag for a work of art like this uh, this big one's 150 yep. um, and some of the smaller ones sort of go down from there yeah so it's a great looking bait look sure it looks fantastic in the water congratulations about your award of the Lewis show much, Steve thank you so much one of the really interesting awards we have at the Lua Show is for the best tied fly and the unique thing is the fly has to be tied here at the show and Sean Ash from All Fly Outfitters, you have been manning this vice solidly for a couple of days. Yep. You created this wonderful work of art that won the award, what's it called? Pa the Pack Rat. The Pack Rat? Yeah, I had to really get the cod guys interested. Yep. So I needed an articulated fly with a fair bit of movement and um, this, this started its life as a small fly for trout. Mm -hmm. and I've just yeah, so XOS'd it. Take us through the anatomy of the fly, How, how's it been built? Okay, so it's a rabbit fur tail. Um, I've taken the fur off the part of the rabbit strip, tied the tail in with two 50 pound pieces of braid to the stinger hook. Yep. Then we add the smaller shank on the back. We add a little bit of dubbing legs and foam to add to the flotation in gurgler style. Mm -hmm. 
and then we go to the medium size shank uh, to add to the next section. Then the last section is one of these double barrel popper heads turned upside down and angled so it becomes a wake fly. So I fish these on a slow sinking intermediate line so we cause the most surface disturbance. So it, it sits on the top and you're sort of trying to pull it down with it's that intermediate line bit, yeah. and, it, and it really it's, it's like a wake bait made into a fly isn't it? Correct. What I'm trying to do is trying to make it look like it's really struggling to swim. Yep. So I don't want it sitting right high on the surface, I want it in, right in the film and soaked rat. So we do them in brown, the winning fly was in grey, which was nice, and I do a toxic pack rat, which is in green. There you go, definitely, and I definitely, that definitely looks like it is going to struggle to swim, so congratulations on your reward. Thank you very much, sir. And it's just Thank another bit show. of, another bit of innovation you see here at the Lua Show. Now, each year, one of the hottest contested categories is for the bibbed hard body diving lure, and Sam Consolo from Solo Lures. This lure back here, this chartreuse and green model, is the winner. It's called the Solo Swagger. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the Swagger was totally designed around Marwala, hitting that two to three metre mark. And it's got this big wide action, it was what I wanted. Didn't want it to go down too deep too quick. So, yeah, it's basically to work those shallows around Marwala and all the timber. So, you know, it floats back pretty quick up as well and there's not that much drag on it when you're bringing it through the water. So you're not really feeling the fatigue at the end of the day, so yeah. Look, it's voted on by peers, so everyone that's at this show that's making lures and exhibiting thought that was the best one there. It's a great looking lure and uh, what sort of retail price do people want to buy one? So, um, I've put down the $60 mark. Um, you know, it was a figure that was thrown at me when I first made them and I thought, oh, okay, might as well run with it. You know, there's lures there that are a, a bit bigger and fetching that 90 and I thought, well, same effort. So I thought, all right, 60 bucks will be it and hopefully, you know, a few people buy them and start throwing them around a bit. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it's won the award here at the show. It's a great looking lure. You're going to need one in your tackle box if you're a Murray Cod fisherman. Okay, we're now at the Lively Lures stand and one of the new awards this year was the best blue water lure and Alan Dolan from Lively Lures, you won that with the Slick Stick. Um, tell us a little bit about the bait. Mate, this is my first uh, foray into stick bait. So I, um, traditionally I've stuck with bibbed and uh, non-bibbed lures and poppers so I thought I'd have a crack at a stick bait for GTs, tuna, trout and all that sort of stuff around the reef edges. If it's a lively lure, you know it's not going to bust. Exactly. You know, you know you can probably run over this with a truck, and, and those sort of fish with those sort of teeth—that's what you need, isn't it? Exactly so, right. so the R and explain a little bit about behind the scenes. What sort of R and D goes into a lure like this, mate? Uh, first of all, I carve it, and then I um, set it up with the right weights and swim it. And if I'm happy with it, I'll um, carry it further. If I'm not, I'll put it on the back burner and and burn it. And burn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, lively lures. Uh, historically have been available through tackle stores but you sell a lot direct now where do people go if they want to buy one of these and when can they get one um, strictly online these days I do have a couple of retailers that follow me but um, mainly online www.livelylures online and how much is that going to cost me I reckon about 30 bucks I'll retail for there you go one of the cheapest and best blue water stick baits on the market Okay, the real hit at the Lua Show Awards last night was Chris Anderson and Kimo Baldwin from Thug Lures. You guys won one, two, three. You won the best presented stand for this great looking stand. You won the best ornamental lure, which is the wonderful top water bait you have with Harrow's picture on it yep. in the cabinet. And of course, you had this, the Swagger, the little tiny uh, bladed bait. Let's start with the Swagger. Tell us about the design process and uh, how you came around with it. Um. It was an idea Kimo had and basically an hour later knocked up a play around one, yeah it's going to work so knocked up all the moulds and yeah it came about that way. A lot of playing around to get it right. It's a double moulded basically like a tail spinner but not a tail spinner. Yeah, so. It's got that flat plate at the end which what sort of action does it give the bait? Uh, it gives the whole bait a whole body move and up and down as well so yeah. I was expecting a story of how it took you months and months of R&D and you had to both go back to university and learn physics to get a swimming properly. It wasn't like that, was it? <laughs> it, it? It did a little bit, just getting the weight right and making the moulds up for the weight. It took me about five different moulds to get it right. Yep. So yeah. Now tell us about the, uh, the ornamental lure. That's always a hotly contested category here at the lure show and yours stood out in the lure cabinet. Uh, what gave you the idea for that? Um, I grew up with Harrow. Um, in the magazines, on, t on TV programs, stuff like that. 
and yeah, I thought it was a good idea. The younger Harrow face that I grew up with, and that's where it come from, um, put in the cod on the end of the bib, the cod pattern on one side and the barrow scales on the other, just because that's what he's known for. So, yep. and, and that lure's going to go to Harrow at the end, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. show of respect to one of the true legends of Australian sport fishing. Yeah. And Kim, tell us about the um, tell us about the, the stand itself. Uh, it's a great looking stand. You guys are obviously artists. Uh, you've obviously you can you can see what looks good, and it's reflected in the stand. How's the show been for you, mate? Yeah, it's good. Best best one we've been to. We are only new at it, but yeah, mate, we'll be back. Love it. Um, I heard stories that there were certain of your baits sold out within uh, hours at the start of the show. Yeah, yeah. 15 minutes, boom, no, yeah, gone, great. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the lure winners from the uh, from the, the lure show for 2017. Uh, it's uh, such a hotly contested category and we have such great talent uh, doing it each year. You guys were the stars of the show. Congratulations. And uh, if anyone out there makes a lure and they want to have a go at these guys and they reckon they can do something more artistic, more functional, a better idea, you're welcome to come and do it. Anyone who exhibits at the lure show can win one of these lure awards.